Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to the stream. Um, today we're going to be answering some of your gerbil questions and hopefully it will be helpful for you and your gerbils. Hello everyone that's here. Hi AA, Buenos Aires, Sophie, Andy, gerbil care. Hi, hi everyone. So I do actually have a gerbil cam set up. I don't know if the gerbil will join us. I hope they will, but we shall see. <laughs> anyway, hello. Hope everyone's doing well this evening or this morning or whatever time of day it is where you are. Okay, so I think there was a couple of questions just before we started. I'll answer those first. Um, gerbil Care asks, uh, is there any wheels for gerbils you recommend? Um, generally, as long as they're uh, really, we'd be around 30 centimeters uh, to stop their backs and tails from bending too much while they run. Um, wooden ones can be quite good, although they might be chewed. Um, one one wheels, uh, some wheels I do really, really want to try is the Tic Tac wheels, although they are really expensive, but they're made from metal, so not only are they Chew proof, they're also key proof, which is nice. Um, but as long as it's generally around 30 centimeters, then you're good to go. Oh, Cat has just joined the stream. <laughs> Hello, Cat. Okay. We have next from Sophie. Um, I want to start free roaming my two female gerbils. I got them Saturday. Um, but having a way back to the enclosure isn't a possibility at the moment. What do I do? Um, and how do I know? How, how do I know if I can get them back out um, of the free roam? I'm scared to get trapped inside since I can't pick them up yet. Okay. Um, well, if you don't have a way back to your enclosure and they're still really new like Saturday is very very early um so if you wanted to free roam them you could maybe use something like um a box or like a cardboard box or a tube um basically something like enclosed and dark for them to like crawl into uh that is a way you can transport them to and from free roaming but I I wouldn't start right now because Saturday is still very, very early. I would give them probably until you've had them at least a month. Uh, just to give them plenty of time to settle in, give you time to kind of build your relationship with them because the more you know them, the easier it will be to know when they want out, when they want back, and just to kind of how comfortable they are and stuff like that. So I would hold off. Um, and then in about, once that you've had them about a month, then use, say, a box, a mug, a uh, tube, something that to get them to go in. Um, in terms of um, when they want to go back, um, what I watch for if there isn't a way home is uh, you might see them uh, at the edge of the playpen or a bath or wherever it is, kind of jumping up at the edge trying to get out. Um, usually this is when I kind of take take as a sign that they're ready to go home. They're really trying to get out, so it's it's time to let them go home. So that's usually when I give them the offer of going home. Okay, um, we've also got some questions uh, from our form. Uh, I'll answer some of those. The first one is an anonymous submission. Um, and they've asked, how can I get my gerbils to let me pick them up? Um, and how do I make them more confident when I come to pick them up? They run away when I try to touch or approach them. Um, so I do actually have some videos on the channel. I've got two videos, uh, two hand taming videos. Um, I would give those a watch um, and kind of follow the tips in there. I think that'll help uh, maybe if you if you can't find them when you're struggling leave. But I think if you go to the 
uh, my main channel page, there's like a research bar. I think you just type in there, uh, hand taming or hand tame, um, or just taming, you might, they should pop up. Um, and hopefully that will help. And next question on the form. Uh, it's from Leone, I think. Hopefully I said that right. Um, is it okay if the gerbils scratch the corner of the cage? Um, it is very common, it is a thing a lot of gerbils do, but it's not normal in the sense that like it's a healthy behavior. Um, the UFAW, um, Animal Welfare Federation, um, they suggest uh, it's called stereotypic digging um, when they do it for like a prolonged period of time. Um, if they just do it for a brief period of time, it might be that they're just trying to figure out like, can I dig through this? Um, like if it's just a quick burst, because sometimes they'll do it, you'll see if they'll jump into a coconut or a box or something, they go mad at the edge, just trying to figure out like, can I get through? Can I dig through this? The answer is no, we know that. But they, they'll, it takes them some time to figure out. Um, so if it's just a brief burst like that, it's not really anything. But if it's continuous, like for like 12, 15 plus seconds, then that goes into stereotypic digging territory. And, and a stereotypic behavior is an abnormal, repetitive behavior that doesn't really show any function. Um, and according to the UFAW, um, stereotypic digging is related to lack of a suitable burrow structure. So some of the elements of that, um, enough space, enough bedding depth, um, and also I've come across some research about darkness. Um, Basically, some researchers did some experiments where they gave gerbils different types of burrows. Some were completely see-through, transparent. Others were completely opaque and couldn't see-through. And what they found was the opaque burrows almost completely eliminated stereotypic digging, um, whereas transparent burrows did nothing. Um, and what I've kind of taken from this is that darkness is important. Um, and I think it's very similar to wood lice. So wood lice don't, they can't see anything. They can only really sense light. Um, and when they sense there's bright light, they'll move around very frequently. You might see if you lift up a rock, you'll see the wood lice kind of scatting and do all that. It's because they're sensing light and they move a lot. When they sense darkness, they slow down um, and stop moving as much because they recognize they're safe. And I think it's similar for gerbils, that the darkness is the cue that tells them, I am underground, I am safe. So if we've got them in big glass tanks with loads of light coming through, they don't really understand that they're underground and they're safe. And that's why they're trying to dig, they're trying to find safety, they're trying to find underground, they're trying to find darkness. And so some ways that I think can help is if we cover the back and sides of their enclosure in dark paper or card to try and block out some of that light coming through so for example if you were to have like a homemade wooden enclosure with the back and sides and floor were all wood and it was just glass at the front that would probably be better in terms of darkness than straight up glass but we can just adapt the glass by creating like a dark outside and that can help um i think it can help anyway there's a, quite a few people have tried it and, and found that it has helped to reduce the behavior Sorry, that was a long one. Stereotypic digging is a big one. <laughs> uh, oh, someone's come in. Kevin the Carrot. Hello, I love that name. <laughs> uh, how do I tame my gerbil? I asked the, answered the question a while ago. I've got two videos on the channel. Uh, if you go to the channel, we search bar, you type in taming, um, and this should come up. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the form here. So this one is from Rodent World. Hello. Um, a few weeks ago, I adopted four degus from a shelter. Uh, I also said that I had female gerbils in the past, but they died. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, the worker said that female gerbils can't live together. Is that true? Um, no. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, females do struggle, are less likely to tolerate trios or larger groups in general. I mean, gerbils shouldn't really be kept in four or more. 
trio is a rare exception if, if absolutely necessary but females are will struggle more like a trio of females are probably more likely to decline than a trio of males although that doesn't mean that males don't but no females absolutely can work together i mean timon and pumba were together for two two and a half pre well till timon passed about two and a half years and then luna's bonded with pumba and misty and they live together quite happily so no that's not true females can live together but gerbils are generally best kept in pets no matter the gender trios if for example there's only three left you don't want to leave one by themselves but generally pairs Thank you. No problem. Okay. What do we have next? Keeping an eye, seeing if I uh, have a gerbil face up here. Not yet. I don't even hear any muscle in here. Hopefully. Hopefully they'll come out and join us. Okay. Next question is from Victor. Do you recommend some place online to ask other gerbil parents and professionals questions about gerbils? Um, yes, I do. Uh, you can probably see it. Yeah. Uh, I have a Facebook group uh, called Professional Gerbil Care, um, and there is also a forum, um, Gerbil Care and Support Forum, on my website that you can join. Um, and failing that, um, I also moderate for the gerbil support subreddit as a backup, but any of those are pretty good to join. Yeah. Hello, I I want to try and pronounce your name, but like I feel like I would absolutely butcher it. So. <laughs> Hello. Um, can gerbils get pregnant in the winter? Asking just as a fun fact. Okay. Yes, they can. Gerbils, female gerbils go into heat. Um, well, two thirds of female gerbils go into heat every four to six days for around eight to 12 hours. And that is throughout the year. There isn't a seasonal change. Um, some gerbils are like totally random. Misty has a random cycle. Luna's like every four days. I feel, I feel so bad for her. She always stands like at the top of the door, just like kind of hunched and just... <laughs> she just looks so sorry for herself. I always give her extra worms to try and cheer her up. Fiance, you're welcome. Oop. I do hear a journal. I heard something. Yay. Uh, is it true that male gerbils are less territorial than female gerbils? From what I've heard, yes. Um, I haven't seen any anything in terms of research, but generally the consensus is males are less less likely to kind of get into fights and arguments than females are. But I've also heard some people say that it makes absolutely no difference. So um, I'm thinking wild gerbils. Who defends the territory? I think males do defend the territory, actually. I think, um, don't call me on that. I would need to double check, but I do think that males are the territory defense. I know that males kind of like build their burrows and then the female kind of goes around and chooses the guy with like the best house. <laughs> um, and I think he then maintains it and chases away and chooses. Um, I think I would need to double check and refresh my memory. Um, so, some people say yes, some people say no, there isn't really any research on it. Uh, there is a really clear answer for that one. Sorry. But generally the consensus is males are less, but there's a consensus on lots of things that I disagree with, so. Oh. Here goes all. There's a Luna, you want to come join us? Is this camera still active? Let me just... Hey Luna! Can I come out and say hi? Can you want to come say hi to everyone? Right, we'll see. He's awake at least. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Where do we get out of this for? 
There we are. Uh, another question from Victor. I read that a gerbil's tooth, if broken, will grow back in a week. Mm, not necessarily. Um, I mean, Pumba's snapped her teeth and it has taken, I think, a couple weeks to get fully back. Um, I've been checking my gerbil for the last few days and the tooth... Oh, never mind. Sorry. Pause. Gerbil. I need to stop everything. Hello. Are you coming out? Come and say hi. Yeah. And then. It's okay. Something good. There's a mystery as well. Here we are. You're gonna come say hi. You're gonna come say hi. Come on then. Come on then. That's it. Look out. Oh, can you see her? Just about. Just at the top of the screen there. Come on then. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, here's a moo moo. Here she is. Hi. <laughs> well, there's Luna too. Hi, you're coming out as well. Thank you. Come on then. Come on then. We have gerbils. We have the gerbils. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, hello. Can you get on No. Sorry. I was trying to give you a worm. I was trying to give you a worm. Come then. Come on, then. Yeah, there we go. Don't come over there for you. <laughs> so we have chocolate. <laughs> Okay, sorry, back to questions. Um, I don't want to put this up because I might cover the gerbils. How long does it take to tame my gerbils? Um, it kind of depends. Um, to get them like fully, fully, to get a really close like bond and relationship with, kind of like a mat with like Luna and Misty, it's like months. Um, in terms of getting them in very basic hand tame, being able to sit on your hand with Luna, even though she's extremely skittish, I was with real really really concentrated hard work like every single day putting in effort um i think it's about two weeks so i got to sit on my hand um but in terms of fully bonded with them um at least a few months is it normal for my gerbil to be protective of my other gerbil when i try to stroke her she stands in front of her when i go near her hmm um i haven't heard of that one before I mean, could she be jealous, maybe? Maybe she... The only thing that would make me think that behaviour would happen would be if they were a mated pair and one of them was pregnant. And the male might then be protective. Or well, for the female, obviously, wanted to protect... Protect his girlfriend, you know? But, in terms of same gender... I wouldn't say normal, it's not anything I've heard of before. Um... Mm -hmm. You're so happy. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I would maybe need some more context. Maybe um, leave a comment on the stream afterwards, and we can try and like figure out something. Because that seems like one that needs a bit more thinking. We're getting us in these girls. Oh, yeah. Mm. How to know if your gerbil is pregnant? Uh, usually they just they, they get very round. They look like pears. Basically, I mean, before that, there isn't really much time. It would just be they get pear shaped. Um, I'm not sure if a vet can do an ultrasound on a gerbil. I don't know. You can maybe ask. Um, but mainly it's just they, they get very round, but that's like, I think, a few days to a week just before they pop, so. Grey gerbil. Yeah, grey gerbil's Luna. Luna might pop one for us, maybe, if she gets happy enough. Nothing. Don't. Okay. We can't just eat that. It's not good for you. 
<laughs> is the tube just got no the top is cardboard hang on i'll take this bit off you can see it's a plank of wood with some dowels glued along for like rungs and then it's cardboard tubes on top just to make it into a tunnel it's okay it's okay Sometimes I hear them speak. Uh, some are more vocal than others. Um, I think um, based on the meta-analysis, the behavior meta-analysis I've seen, um, squeaking can have about seven or more different possible causes. Some are like aggressive, angry, others are happy because they're being groomed. Um, I think some gerbils are just squeaky. <laughs> These two, I think it might actually be Luna because yeah, you. <laughs> um, I think Luna might actually be the squeaking one because I did notice squeaking started when Luna and Pumba were together. I thought it was Pumba getting fed up at Luna, but there's a lot of squeaking now, so it's very hard to tell who's who. But squeaking is well, Timon and Pumba, I never heard them squeak, but since bringing Luna into the house, there's, there's lots of squeaking. Please submit two questions. Hello, I answered them a wee while ago. Um, wait, I think I, w I was halfway through the second one <laughs> when I got distracted by gerbils. How do you and the gerbils mean? I've been alright, thank you. Gerbils are trying to destroy the box. What are you doing? Uh, Luna did lose the toenail recently, that's why there's no... It's usually there's sand in the wee blue thing there. What are you doing? You can't just sit and eat those. They're not food. They're not, they're toys. Are you eating one? Sounds like you are. Um, Luna lost the toenail. We were in the bath doing bath free room and she got, I think she got her toenail stuck on a towel. So I did a little post about it. Um, she's okay. She's okay. I, I had her in hospital sign for the day. We did some foot baths. She did she handle it really well. She was really good. Weren't you? You were very brave. Yes, you were. <laughs> So for now we've got no sand and there's no sand, no soil. Can you do that? You're not supposed to eat those. They're not food. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can we swap? Drop a worm instead. Come on in. Come here. Eat a worm. Yeah, eat a worm. Where did it go? <laughs> I can't even reach that. Okay. I just have to leave it for now. I'll get it later. <laughs> Luna, Luna is the one in the corner over there. <laughs> when sweet when they groom each other. Yep. Or it could just be like, mm, that's a spot, you know? Like, that's a really good spot to groom. Please groom that one. There's just so many different possible reasons for why they squeak. And Luna. Um, well, her toe obviously won't have grown back yet. I don't think her toe is like fully healed. It's scabbed over, but I'm going to give it at least a few more days before we add sand back in because I don't want it to be, um, I don't want it to get accidentally reopened. But with Misty, when Misty lost her toenail, it took, it's only now actually just fully, fully grown back and that's been about three months. So in terms of better, she's not bleeding or, or actively injured anymore. Um, but it will take a wee while for it to fully heal. Take a week or maybe two to fully heal and then a few months to go back. Your next one is coming up. We I was halfway through it when the gerbils distracted me. I'll finish answering the questions in the chat and then we'll go back to the form. So. Uh him gerbil break his leg. He's been to the vet. I adopted him for my Oh, the gerbil because we're too long. Do you think we can bond them now? It's been about two weeks since we've If he's. Mm, two weeks is quite early. I don't know if his leg will be fully healed. I would wait until he's. I don't know what the vet said about how long it would take to heal, but I would wait and see um, until he's fully, fully healed because if he's in pain, he may struggle to bond. And if he's still um, actively injured, it could possibly prevent the other gerbil from accepting him. Because obviously, a sick, injured animal in the wild is kind of. Uh, liability, which is cruel to say, but you know, if you're if you're sick, you're more likely to attract predators, unfortunately. So, 
Um, I would wait until he's fully healed and then... I don't think you could bond them, but I, I would make sure he's healed first. When squeak only in the middle of the night. <laughs> nice. Okay. So let's get back to Victor's question. Um, I read that Gerbil's tooth, if broken, will grow back in a week. I've been checking my Gerbil for the last few days and the tooth hasn't started coming through his gums yet. I just see a divot in his gums where the tooth should be. Is it normal or something we should do? If, he's, if you just see a divot in his gums, um, that would... That would suggest it's not just broken, but it's fully come out. Um, I know it's been a week. Maybe it may be worth actually getting checked with a vet just to see. Because if the tooth is like fully come out of the root, you want to make sure there isn't like gum disease or some other kind of gum damage that's that's caused that. Because if it just snapped, then it could have just been just bitten something hard. But if it's just snapped, you would still see a bit of tooth remaining it wouldn't be just like a hole in his gums that sounds like it's like fully come out um i would get checked with that and make sure there isn't another reason for that hey miss dean what can you win hey hope you enjoyed the stream thanks for coming okay Question. Almost through these questions on the phone. It's from Ari. Quick question about Gerald's diet. I find divided comments on this. In your opinion and experience, can gerbils eat strawberries and bananas? If true, how often is it recommended? Um, yes, they can. Um, they are. Um, gerbils aren't as susceptible to high sugar in their diet, and fruit isn't shouldn't really be like a primary part of the diet because it is quite high in sugar and they don't naturally eat that and their systems aren't really designed for it but it is fine what I do is I usually give them like teeny tiny like small pea sized amounts so like if for example I'm making myself strawberries I might cut off like the very very tip of the strawberry and like cut it in half and give them a tiny piece each and that would maybe be like two or three times a week at most um, but usually they only get it once a week once every so often I, I I don't think it needs to be like super super limited but i also wouldn't give them too much maybe not more than like two or three times a week i think with veg you can probably give them a bit more than that you can do every day if you wanted as long as it's a tiny amount it's like i wouldn't give them too much mm -hmm. oh uh oh oh no oh i got back <laughs> technical issues <laughs> Do you still have anyone else? What are you doing? Hello? Hi, of course it's me. Ma'am. Did you, did you run away with a peanut? Can I have it? Excuse me. This is not for eating. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's not for eating. It's like a worm and stuff. Okay, next question on the form. Yeah, it's not a snack. It's not. Okay, our next question is from Angie. Um, it says, I have three gerbils, Luna, Mia, and Shine. Ah, oh, you know. We think our Luna is two years old, but now is less active, no longer annoying or telling like before. She drinks water and eats little, but only if she's undercover. Beck could not detect any particular illness. Is this behavior of an elder gerbil? Any suggestion? Well, the fact that you've already taken her to the vet is good. Um, and if the vet's checked them over and doesn't see there's much of a problem, then it could just be... It could just be old age. Um, Loon, I mean, it could also be something internal, potentially. Um, it's worth. What, what happened? Was that just a zoomie? Was it? Were you very excited? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
It could it could be age. Um, Timon and Pumba did start chewing less, um, doing less generally. I did notice it as soon as I got Luna, basically, with Timon and Pumba for ages before. Really? <laughs> for ages before they kind of were like, yeah, for many, for quite a few months actually. The last the last few months they had when I set up their tank with different layers, they would stay pretty much in layers. Um, whereas with Luna and now with Misty as well, like literally within a day, it's completely mixed. There is no sign of any layers that ever existed. Um, so yeah, I do think they do slow down and do a little bit less as they age. Um, so it could yeah, just be that. Oh, welcome. Is there a good way to get our new gerbils to be more social? They both seem to want to hide every time we get them. I've got a couple videos on the channel. Ah, it's, I'm just like, it's okay. Um, I've got a couple of videos on my channel about hand taming. There's also general taming tips and general tips for like encouraging them out. So I would check out those. Um, if you go to my channel, in the search bar, and just type in taming gerbil, hand taming, hand tame. I'm just trying to think of the titles. Um, but yeah, you should be able to find them that way. There's two of them. Gerbil's diet is more based on seeds. Yeah, seeds, seeds, roots, leaves would be the kind of things they would come across in the wild more so than anything like fruit or, or fresh vegetables or anything like that. Um, what is considered gerbil as old? Three years? Yeah, uh, yeah. Once they get to two, it's kind of. Obviously, it depends because old is more reflective of health. So if your gerbil is still really, really healthy and fit and active and not slowing down and not getting grey hair at three years old, then they're not really old. But generally from two onwards, you are looking at gerbils starting to get older. Um, three years, definitely kind of getting up there. Uh, average lifespan for gerbils, I think, is two and a half to four and a half years. Um, so three, I think, would probably be like 60-ish. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think one year, one gerbil year is about 20 human years. If you think five versus, to say the five years where you can live average up to 100. So yeah, probably. I want to do a video about gerbil diet. I forgot one. There is one on the channel. Again, just put in the research. I do plan on doing another one though. I do because there are some. I do have some slightly different opinions, especially in terms of um, pellets and like ingredient quality. And there's there's some stuff, other stuff I would want to talk about. I do plan on doing another one at some point, but there is a basic one that goes over at least basic nutritional requirements. But now instead of just saying 100 muesli, I would generally recommend doing at least 50 50 for a couple of reasons. Um, Partially because music can introduce selective feeding and no deal. and the pellets give them uh, complete nutrition so they can kind of help counteract some selective feeding. And the other reason is because, well, with Pumba, I had multiple times when she snapped her teeth when she got older. So if you've got, if half of your diet is always pellets, then if, for example, if one of your gerbils does break their teeth and they need to go into soft food for a while, you've got, you can just switch them over to 100% pellets and make it wet. Because if you were to go from 100% pellets to 100% muesli to 100% pellets, that switch, that drastic switch in diet could upset the tummy and give them diarrhea, which we don't want. Whereas if it's only 50%, if it's already 50% pellets and then you're just upping it to 100, their systems are more likely to be able to tolerate that. So it's kind of a later down the line precaution as well as and now ensuring they get adequate nutrition. Keep an active sleep, yep. Yep. Keep it nice and busy and foraging in the foraging box. And um, unhealthy diet, all very healthy, all very good things. Keeping your healthy weight nice, good size. You're nice and healthy now, aren't you? Okay, do we have, I think we've got another question in the form. Let's have a look. 
Becky from Rebecca E. Uh, so I have two gerbils. One broke his leg a week or two ago. The other one seems to be lonely. Both are rescues, not being wanted yet. I think you asked that in the chat, didn't you? You might have asked that in the chat. Feeling wonderfully, and he's very active and healthy. Yeah, once it's healed, I would bond them. As long as, as long as the leg isn't causing problems or anything like that, as long as it's healed and um, he's better. Yeah. <sighs> Hi, Jebbies. Okay, so that's us all caught up on the form. So that's okay. See you next time. Hope you have a good day, whatever you're doing. Okay. Yeah. So if anyone's got any other questions, just drop them in the chat. Yeah. What do you do this? Let's change this music, shall we? Uh, Hi. Wait. Which is it? Which one? Huh? I just got my six-year-old, six-year-old travels. That's that's very old for travel. Um. Two gerbils for Christmas, how can you recommend them to wrap them and hold them? Um, don't try and just straight up pick them up, try and build up a, a relationship with them first. Um, I've got two hand taming videos on the channel. Um, for you, go to the channel, we search around the corner, search for hand taming or hand tame, um, and they should come up. Um, the second one, Luna, I think it's called Do You Need Low Bedding Hand Tame Gerbils? Um, that goes through. The whole process I went through with Luna from before I even brought her home to bring her home and how I built up the relationship with her and actually got her to sit on my hand after just two weeks. Um, but that was very intensive. That was intensive work, intensive training. And um, they may not come around that fast. Oh, my kid is six. Okay. <laughs> They're only six months old. Okay. Um, oh, I got my six year old. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> um, yeah, I would give them time. I would check out those videos, particularly the, the second one I did, um, Do You Need Look Around Town Team Gerbils? That, that goes through the whole process of building up trust, building up a relationship, and before you hold them, you first kind of teach them that you're okay and fine to be around and that you're safe and being up and about is safe. And then you kind of work on to actually getting them onto your hand. Uh, but I wouldn't try and pick them up straight away. If you want to get your wee six-year-old to interact with them, the way I would recommend would be something like this. Um, playpen. Yeah. Um, or in the bath, if you don't have a playpen, you can get... Because gerbils generally don't like being held in strokes and they're not the animals that would generally sit for cuddles. They're more... They want to play on the human climbing frame. So, um, best way to get your six-year-old to interact with them would be to have them sit in like a playpen or a bath. Um, be really gentle with them, just let them do their thing, add lots of treats, things like that. Um, and initially, when they're not hunting, if you do want to get them out into somewhere like that, you can use, I'm talking about it, use like a box. So you want to know what one <laughs> Use a box or a tube or like a mug, something, something dark and enclosed that will encourage them to kind of climb in. You can use that to kind of transport them to and from. If you do have them out for free roam and you don't have like a tunnel back home like I do, um, when I would decide to take them home is if you see them kind of at the edge of the playpen or at the edge of the bath, they're kind of like jumping up, trying to repeatedly jumping up, trying to spring themselves out. That's usually the sign that they're done, they want to go home. 
Um, I would start doing that initially. I'd give them at least a couple of weeks, maybe a month before trying. Just let them sell in, work on building trust and taming them first, and then add that in later. <laughs> I haven't been paying much attention to my GRI balls for a few weeks, just had a lot of stuff. Is it bad for them or can they just live by themselves? I'm often feeding them within pitch. Yeah, that's fine. Um, interaction is, regular interaction is good for maintaining the bond, maintaining trust, for you being able to see, are you just causing chaos? Yeah. For you being able to see any behavior changes, any health changes, that's what it's important for. But like if, for example, I mean, it happens to me sometimes where I get really busy, I spend all day, every day, multiple days like editing videos for example um and i don't really have time to come through other than a quick hello here's your food i need to go and that's fine they are fun as one of the good things about gerbils is if you do need to kind of leave them unattended for most of the day they will be okay um but re regular interaction is good for for a bond for monitoring health and things like that welcome you know if you eat the box, the peanuts can't stay in. Right? Do you know? Do you know that? Did anybody tell you? <laughs> yeah. You gotta you got freak out, okay. You do you go. Okay. Ooh. Any more questions? Just drop them in the chat. There's just, oh, there you are. Hi. What are you doing? Not for me, always. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your meal. I hope your cat enjoys his dinner as well. Yeah. I do need to watch Lily Marjorie's in the Tropic because she has a habit of trying to split the page. Yes, you do. Yeah. You do. You always say about this, don't you? Yeah. I can see, I can see it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Dribbles are done for a minute, I think. Any more questions from anyone? Just drop them in the chat. Kind of, though, you can see your feet. But they, bump, they thump their feet. Um, gerbils will do that a lot um, if they get spooked. Um, and also, female gerbils do it a lot when they're in heat. Usually that's how we know, is um, on, on a day when there is lots and lots of thumping, usually one of them's in heat. Mainly you, yeah? As soon as the most regular, aren't you? Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, it's not the signs of in heat, how you tell the difference of whether it's spook or whether it's heat there. I do have a video on the channel about it. Um, they'll kind of run up to the other gerbil and then turn their back and kind of like show their bum. Um, <laughs> it's quite quite offensive by our standards, but... <laughs> um, what else is it? Here's something. Turning the back. I've forgotten the other signs. Those are the main ones I notice. That I see in them, particularly when it's at the top. You see more when they're like in a split tank or something like that, when the bed is lower. Um, but yeah, they might do it a lot. Uh, my heat lamp is a clamp kind. If coach doesn't support that, what can I use to do some clamp alternative sports? Why do you? Gerbil shouldn't need a heat lamp. Um, I don't know, I don't clamp anything to my enclosures, um, but they shouldn't really need a heat lamp, if anything, it might make them too hot. Gerbils aren't animals that need like super high heat, it's generally 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. So pretty average room temperature, you don't want it to get too hot, or they 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 can overheat. They're actually more prone to overheating than they are um, getting too cold.
I can see a tail. Where is she? Can I see her on here? Destroying. In typical Luna fashion, we have discussion. Hmm? You just see something. You want to figure out how you can destroy it, huh? Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's your whole mission in life. Yeah. You've got a cake or something, yeah. Anyone have any more questions? I'm trying to check the comments, <laughs> but uh, my laptop has frozen. Oh, I'm still here, everyone can still hear and see me. As long as you can hear and see the jerkles, that's the important thing I mean. Um, let me refresh now. Yeah, we're here. We're back. Uh, we're next. Uh, the door soon tends to be on the coolest side. We have plenty of bedding. Is that okay? Uh, generally, yeah. Um, as long as I've got about at least 10 inches of bedding. 25 centimeters. Um, that usually goes a long way. Um, I also have... Eight little little thermometers that just sit on top of their tank um that i can keep an eye um generally with a pair and with deep bedding i wouldn't worry unless the temperature gets below 15 degrees um if it was if you had a solo durable and or uh, low bedding i'd be careful not to let it go to below like 18 20. thank you <laughs> are you happy are you having fun yeah <laughs> Are you? You got the zoomies. <laughs> you do. You got the zoomies. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> I know. I see you. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Can I give them some food from outside at least in grass? I generally don't because you can't sterilize it um, and make sure that there is no bacteria or pathogens or anything like that. I feel like I take the risk. Um, I will use like pine cones or something like that because I can boil them and bake them. Um, but with food and um, things like leaves and grass, you, you can't really do that. You can't make sure they're properly sterilized. So I wouldn't take the risk because uh, you're too are taking the risk of something that could make me sick. Um, for me, it's just not worth it. I can not have days with you. Possibly. I am seriously considering it. Because they are just like giant ripples. Mm. 
invite the nice. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be nice because. <laughs> Rough and mad one. It is a smooth material plastic green alternative to a top of layer. Can't. Uh uh. I'm confused. Do you mean topper as in like my tank topper? What I've got on top of my tank? Or do you mean a playpen? Um, as a topper, um, it would limit airflow, um, which isn't ideal. Uh, so probably not as a temporary small play area. I don't see why not. I have used that myself in the past. Um, you can also use bath as a temporary play area. Um, but for a topper, you can always get an old um, an old gerbil cage or a hamster cage and use just the metal part of the top and put it on top, which is basically what I've done here. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Playpen. Playpen, yeah, you could use it temporarily as a playpen. Or, or you could use a bath or something like that. Obviously, an actual proper playpen would give them more space, but if you can get like a really large box, yeah, it can work temporarily. I'd keep, I'd keep an eye on them because, I mean, even this, this playpen that I've got now, they, if they really wanted to, they could jump out. So, keep an eye. So, we have any escape artists. Can we not chew it back, please? Like, all you just take it up to stop eating it. Can we not? Yeah. Look at all the mess you're making. Huh? You have to destroy everything in sight, huh? Yes. You do. You really do. <sighs> so much gold. Um, gerbils generally live two and a half to one and a half years from two onwards. Um, they do start getting it is more likely that they start to get nice. It is more likely that um, they're going to start to get more health issues. Oh, and this dancing. Hang on, one sec. You got. Come here. What's that? I'm trying to stop you chewing your way out. Can you not? Me. Um. Sorry, where was it? Two and a half to four and a half is how long they live. So two onwards, they're more likely to get health issues. Um, so from two, uh, two onwards, probably is when I'd consider them like old. But it depends on their health. It's more about how healthy they are, how active they are, how whether or not they've got health issues, um, whether they've got gray hair, things like that. Um, it can happen at any, any age. Old isn't so much a number as it is a space of health. Right, if we're chewing that, can we not? Excuse me, no, that is not the doing. What is my other? Sweet, 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 good luck, sweet, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. No, no chew. Mm. Ways to encourage bathing other than treat tricks and boys don't groom each other. Do you have a sand bath? Sand bath's how they bathe. If generally, if you just give them sand, they will roll around in it and bathe themselves. My baby just turned three. Vet said that it was really impressive. You seem normal and energetic. So fun to see. You're welcome. Yeah, if he's still he's still normal and energetic, but he's technically still fairly young. You know, it's more it's more about health than it is about age specifically. Right, we will have my house. I put everything up to you, you're not supposed to do this. This is to stop you chewing, not for you to chew. Yes. Just to just get a bit of a Okay. Any more questions from anyone? Do a big deep bowl. They don't clean or poop even. It's rare that cinders, so maybe they just don't want to. I mean, as long as like their fur looks kind of, I mean, the way you see like Luna, smooth and shiny, and they're okay, you know. 
as long as you're providing the ability for them to bathe if they choose to, that's what you can do. Should I worry if one gerbil stares me <laughs> when I sleep? <laughs> Some are just nosy. <laughs> I mean, the way I kind of think of it is us as humans quite enjoy watching other animals do their thing. So I just kind of see it as gerbils are watching human TV like we sometimes watch gerbil TV. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. I don't know why they find it interesting, but I don't know. Maybe they're just like, oh, what is that big giant gerbil doing? <laughs> but I don't worry about it now. I'm watching you, Luna. Yes. You see, you know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah don't wink at me, I know. You're trying to be cute to get away with stuff. That's it, chew that. That's a good thing to chew. Oh, you can see her, she's hiding behind the name tag. Okay, well, we're coming up on an hour now. If anyone's got any more questions, you might head off soon. Yeah, you got done, don't you? Yeah, you got done. Yeah. Not quite. Maybe just them for night. I saw the drone. Gerbils do not have a set sleeping schedule. Um, they are known as polyphasic sleepers, which means they have multiple periods of sleep rather than having like one long period of sleep. Um, and they generally just have lots of naps throughout the day and night. So they'll be active throughout the day and throughout the night, kind of in equal measures. Um, in the wild, at least, they are more, more active at night during the summer when it's cooler and more in the day, in the winter, when it's warmer. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're not strictly diurnal. They, they, they sleep whenever they want to sleep and get up whenever they want to get up. Are you just trying to stash all of them somewhere else? Is that your goal? Yeah, looks like that's your goal. <laughs> so they don't belong in that box, huh? They're the wrong box for peanuts. <laughs> you know, you're okay. You're okay. I'm oh, thinking you too. I think we're probably going to head off. Unless anyone's got any more questions, don't answer quickly. Thank you for making videos, you're totally so You're welcome. I'm glad I can help. That's like a whole goal. I make them just so I can try and help you guys out, help out your variables. So I'm glad I'm able to do that. So thank you for letting me help. Okay, so on that note, I think I will say goodbye. And stop messing with Luna, I'm trying to destroy things. <laughs> say bye, Luna. You want to say bye? You just want to destroy stuff, aren't you? Tease and hunter, and lots of patience to chase it. Really does. <laughs> yep. Bribery. Bribery. I answered that one earlier. Scroll back when it's, um, um, we're just about to head off now. But I answered that one, um, earlier on in the stream. Okay. You're watching me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go monitor this dribble. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I hope I was able to help. I hope it was useful. The reason I got dribbles. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm glad that they've given some dribbles a good home. And I'm glad I'm able to help. Okay, so I think. Uh, I think that's it for today. I think I'm going to head off um, <laughs> and try and stop Luna destroying the entire place. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Bye, everyone. I uh, hope to see you next time. Hope we can do this again soon. Bye.